Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 17. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our fuel compensation trims that we have available to edit in our Mtune software. This is going to be things like our intake air temp comp and our barrel pressure comp as well as our warm-up enrichment which is also known as our engine coolant temp compensation. We need all of these in place to be able to account for the density of the air as it's entering your engine as well as overcoming what's known as a wall winning effect as the engine is warming up. There's gonna be a lot to cover. Let's jump into this video so we can check out how these trims are applied and how we can calibrate them. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our fuel compensation modifiers that we have available within our Mtune software. These are gonna be accounting for things like air temperature or engine coolant temperature or even barometric pressure so that our fuel and airflow model are more accurate. Without having these compensation tables in place, we won't be able to account for the density of our air as it's entering your engine. We're also not gonna be accounting for what's known as a wall winning effect when the engine is cold, that we have to go and add an additional amount of fuel so that the engine's gonna run proper on warm up conditions. Let's jump in here and take a look at what we're gonna be talking about. First, I wanna go in, jump down into tuning and take a look at the main fuel table. This main fuel table always will represent an engine that's came up to operating temperature meaning we have our engine coolant temperature anywhere from 160 to approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit. In that operation range, this table here will be accurate. At that point, the engine has enough heat into it and we'll find that the fuel is gonna atomize properly. On a cold engine, if our engine coolant temperature is 40, 50 degrees, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll find the fuel doesn't atomize very well. And we have what's known as a wall wetting effect. And a wall wetting effect the fuel will stick to the intake track, into the intake valves, and it won't get into the engine as efficiently and atomize properly as we find on a warm engine. In these conditions, in a warm up condition, when the engine is cold and it's trying to come up to operating temperature and build that heat, we find that we have to go and add additional fuel above and beyond the main fuel table. So when we're doing any tuning in our main VE table, we wanna make sure that we don't have our engine uh, in the warm up state and that we don't have any kind of coolant temp correction being applied or the warm up enrichment correction being applied in the background. We can actually see the status of this. If we go here to real time, we take a look under fuel and going down in here, we actually can take a look. We have our different trims, our IAT trim, our barrel trim, and then we can find CLT trim or coolant temp trim. Right now, this is showing approximately 1%. So it's increasing and scaling everything in within our main fuel table here by approximately 1% correction. That's not a big deal, but if we're really cold coolant temperatures, something like 50, 60 degrees coolant temp, and the engine is first fired off, this can be pretty significant, and we'll find this may be as high as 20, 30, even 40%. In that case, it's multiplying 40% of the calculated pulse width coming from our airflow modeling from our VE table. We can actually see, taking a look up down here, fuel pulse effective primary, that's our base pulse width that's being calculated. Now at this point, let's take a look at what the actual coolant temp is going to be. So looking down our list here, we find under engine control, we see coolant temperature showing 135, approximately 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this situation, the engine is almost up to operating temperature. If we see that the coolant temperature goes up here just a little bit, We'll find if this increases, goes up to, let's say, 190, 180. Notice that our coolant temp trim zeroes out. At the point where this zeroes out, we are now, now riding all on the main fuel table. So any of the calibrating that we want to do would be done when the engine is warmed up and we don't have any coolant correction or modifiers being applied. Now, when the engine is fired up cold, we know that we can't touch our main fuel table because this represents the engine in the warmed up state. That's where, if we're having any kind of fuel discrepancies when the engine's firing off, if we're finding that it's too rich or too lean, whatever the target lambda is commanding, if we're way off, we're gonna have to jump into our coolant temp correction table to fix that air fuel delivery problem. It is not going to be an airflow modeling problem, it's gonna be a wall wetting problem that we need to deal with. And that's where we're gonna to start to jump in and take a look at our first compensation table, which is going to be our coolant temp correction. Let's go take a look at that right now. Jumping into fuel here. If we move down, we'll find under fuel general, we'll see an area here called start, warm up, ASE, or after start enrichment. 
Now, we're only going to be focused on this video at our warm up enrichment table, specifically warm up fuel. Within this table, thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.